Oh, this is Heath Dweft, and I listen to Rack on News. Good evening, and welcome to Rack on News. Uh, my name's Jason Holmes. I don't know what happened there. I think it was supposed to say that uh, uh, Heath was. Uh, my name's Heath Campbell, and I live listen to Rack Hunters News. But uh, anyway, that didn't happen, so uh, I don't know what that, what's going on there. But we've had a few technical issues tonight, um, which we'll probably get into a little bit later. I hope you're having a great, great weekend. And and you know what? I really do. I actually hope that you've had a great weekend. I hope everything's good with you, and uh, and uh, everybody, everything in the world is great. You've uh, you've seen the cartoons uh, of Elon Musk sending his car up into space and making a cartoon out of it. Um, you've seen all that. The world is a great place. You know that it's obviously real because it looks so fake. So uh, in in Elon Musk, we trust the billionaire man. Um, who's probably who's not had any problems? It, 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 imagine you and I, you or I, trying to put a, 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 a ship into space. Anyway, forget about that. Forget about Elon Musk. It's just ridiculous. Uh, good stuff on the. Um, uh, there's a lot kicking off on the Jeremy Bamber front as well, which I will probably update you with tomorrow night. Uh, but tonight, I want to get to our guests. I've got these fabulous guests. It's took me, oh. Do you know, I've, I've been bugging them and bugging them and bugging them and bugging them. And they have been getting, you know, saying no, 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 no. And yet tonight I have managed to get them both on. So a big warm welcome. I'm going to turn your mics up now, fellas, so you'll be able to talk. Um, I don't know. What, do you want to be co-host or just a guest, Andy? Um, or, or Sorry, not just a guest, but do you want to be co-host or guest? Uh, I'm I'm not big on titles, mate. I'm just me. Okay. Well, well Andy Young's here with us. Um, he used to be my co-host. He still is. Um, most of the t- a lot of the time. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, he's having a bit. He, he had a bit of a break. I think I think he's on his way back, mate. To be fair, I've I've been speaking to him the last couple of days. We've done some sound checks. He wants to do some things. I want. I think he's on his way back. So a big big thank you for you to for joining us, Andy, and also uh, Aid Hardy. Aid, who usually is on, uh, you, sorry, used to do Raconteurs 2 on a Monday night, um, and he he wants to tell everybody that this world is is belongs to him and not anybody else. So that's it. <laughs> Aidy, how you doing, mate? I'm all right. I'll, I'll either be just a co-host or just a guest. I'm not bothered which. <laughs> Yo, you're a guest, mate. You're a guest. I mean, this is we we wanted you. You wanted to come on. You wanted to talk about some uh, some issues, some glaring issues. Um, I, but but before we start, I'd just like to say um, a, a big hello to uh, everyone in the chat room. Don't forget, you can get on the chat room if you go to raconteursnews.com. There's a chat room there. You can listen live. I'm also broadcasting on Facebook as well. Uh, day uh, on uh, Facebook Live, so you can see that there, and hopefully that's this the same quality that we've got um, going through Spreaker. But yeah, on fa- on Spreaker dot com, uh, Raconteurs News dot com, uh, Facebook Live, you can hear us. We are talking uh, what, what we're talking about tonight. So uh, a, a big hello to everyone in the chat room, uh, particularly Super Leeds. Terrible result at the weekend. Uh, I do apologise. Um, on behalf of the people of Sheffield, that you had to endure being uh, defeated by the, uh, the 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 blades uh, this weekend. Uh, but again, I feel I, I'm I'm sort of associated with you and your sorrow because uh, my team were just about as were, were wank anyway. We're completely wank. So uh, let's get back to tonight. How you doing, Andy? All right, mate. I'm doing absolutely brilliant, Jason. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had a fantastic day uh, with my grandson, and the world is smiling on me at the minute. Brilliant. brilliant. What about you, Aidy? Let's uh, let's bring you in. You wanted to come on the show tonight. You wanted to talk about some stuff, some uh, uh, some, some different issues. So uh, why don't we uh, get into that for starters, Aid? Yeah. Okay, mate. Um... Just for anybody who sort of doesn't know my background, has never heard us before, um, I was best part of two decades. I was a, a financial advisor. Started off as like different company, but a bit like the old man from the Prue that used to knock on your door every week for your 
insurance premiums and then as the industry evolved i evolved with it and uh, finally ended up working for barclays as a independent financial advisor and everything that i'm going to say tonight i knew nothing about all the way through any qualification that i ever took in finance or any ever read in any financial publication um because actually when you're doing that job nobody teaches you about money Nobody at all. No. Um, one thing I wanted to get into was uh, the difference between money and currency. And they are actually two completely different things. And I, I know I'm sort of Captain Cliché, and I do believe that this world belongs to all of us, not just the chosen few. And, and I know it's a little sort of saying I've got, but there's a bit to add to that. And that's that we've all got one common enemy, and that's the elite. I don't care what colour you are, what religion you are, what football team you support, whether you like me and couldn't give two hoots about football, um, whether you fought with the people in Nottinghamshire, if you were living in South Yorkshire over the miners' strike, all these things are there to divide us. And actually, you know, there is only one race, and that's the human race, and... Yeah. We've got one common enemy, and that's the elite. And how they find against us constantly is by using currency, not money. Now, when we look at... Everybody says, oh, yeah, I've got some money in my pocket, some cash in my pocket. Um, I'm going to do this bit briefly because most people who are going to listen to this are going to, going to know... About just over one and a half percent of actual what we'd call cash or money in circulation has only ever and will only ever be printed. Everything else just um, exists. That's as, just three percent in it, isn't it? Three percent that's actual physical well, it, money. It was less than two. I think it's gone down to just over one and a half now. Yeah, it, well, I it probably has. Yeah, time. yeah. I, I haven't looked for a long time, if I'm honest. Well, all of the rest only exists within a computer. And very briefly, when you speak to somebody and say, you know, how is money made? We all Hello, believe it's is... made by the government or it's made by the Bank of England. Or if you're in America, you know, th they've got their own private bank. And that's exactly what they are. They're a private bank. And money or Hello. currency, apart from the little bit that's actually been printed, is ever created as debt. So when you go get a mortgage... Nobody picks up £100,000 and moves it from one corner of a vault into your little and then taps it into a computer. The only bit that happens is it just gets tapped into a computer. And the only reason it actually becomes something tangible that you could actually use is because somebody tapped it into a computer. That's all that happened. So they'll lend you nothing. Okay, it doesn't matter whether it's a credit card that you haven't even drawn on yet or whether it's um, a loan, a mortgage, anything of that nature, that is how money, or let's call it, comes into existence. And dead briefly, fractional reserve lending in a one-minute lesson. I borrow a £1,000. They magically make it uh, appear in my bank account. Somebody else can then borrow £10,000 because the fraction is a tenth. So all they do is add a zero. Because then there's £10,000 in that account, somebody else can borrow £100,000. And so on and so on and so on. So in four transactions, and there are millions of these every day throughout the banking system, a million pounds is created. So what I'm trying to get at is with currency, there is an infinite amount of it whether it comes into existence through what they call quantitative easing. Well, if you're unsure about quantitative easing, this is it in a nutshell. Um, let's put all this money into the banking system. The banks will say that they've had a really good quarter and give them all uh, a decent pay rise with it and a big bonus. That's what quantitative easing does for the, um, the growth of the markets. Now, when you look at the growth of anything... We were 200 years or more 
without inflation. And that's because we were dealing with real money. In other words, um, just like when you go to dry cleaners and you give them your suit, they give you a ticket with a number on it. It's a claim check. Yep. And what you what used to happen was you used to go to a bank with your coins, gold, silver, whatever. You'd put them in the bank and they would give you a claim check, a loan note for £10 of whatever it was you'd put in, £20 of whatever you'd put in. And then all that happened was instead of people going to the bank, getting out what they wanted to spend for the day in real gold and silver, um, then exchanging it, and then the shopkeeper going back to the bank and putting the same, they just started to exchange these loan notes. Yeah. And that's how currency comes into existence. Yeah, and then, big... they, then, they get to, then they get to a point where they realise that people aren't coming back to claim that they're gold and, and they're just you, th- these notes are being exchanged between people and then they realise that, oh, actually, do we, have, we, 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 we can actually lend more of these notes uh, based upon nothing because the people will, the, the people will never come for, the, for their currency, their gold. And that's, that's how money that's first right. started. And, and that's... And that's where we get fractional reserve lending. Now, don't forget, was, what is it in the Bible when Jesus kicked somebody out of the church or whatever because they were making interest on money? I forget what it is. I'm not a religious kind of guy. Um, you know, and for, for hundreds of years, we didn't have inflation. Now, money, I would call gold and silver. And the reason I say that is because... There's a finite amount of it. The gold and silver that we've all got round our necks and on our fingers is still the same gold and silver that the Egyptians used thousands of years ago. Uh-huh. It's the same stuff. Yeah. I don't know of a fiver or a tenner or a £20 note that, that's still going to be in existence in two years from now. Um, even the so-called coins that we've got, it's lovely how they paint them gold, isn't it? But that's all it is. It's not got an intrinsic value. It only has a value of pound, two pounds, fifty pence, a ten or a five or what? Because you and I agree that it has. But equally, if you and I agree that these bitcoins have got a value, then they have too. The difference between bitcoin and currency is there's a finite amount of it. So gold and silver and bitcoin have got more in common than a pound and a dollar. Because there's a finite amount. And that's the difference between money and currency. Now, I've been looking um, at the history of money. And nowhere could I find any fiat, in other words, central, centrally controlled, government controlled uh, currency. That has, one, lasted longer than, I think, I think the longest one I found was about 100 years. Um. But secondly, has never done anything other than get back to its true value of nothing. Right. Each and every one, I've, I haven't found one yet, that has done nothing other than get back to its intrinsic value of absolutely jack shit, nothing, zip, worthless crap. Right. Because we used to talk about the gold standard and uh, how the dollar was, oh, the almighty dollar. Well, the almighty dollar, all the Americans did was effectively sell all these and buy all these goods from China, and they've exported all their dollars. And very, very soon, these nice little Chinese people are going to realize that actually all they've done is export their shite to us. Mm. And it's all going to come rushing back for its true value of nothing. Because since the dollar went off the gold standard, that's exactly what it's worth. So when when did the nothing. dollar the, the dollar went oh, off the gold standard? Has, what was that nineteen thirteen, the Federal Reserve Act that, that the dollar went off uh, off uh, the gold standard? I think it was then, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 
19, uh, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve Act was snuck through, I think it was on Christmas Eve in 1913, it was, Eve it was something like that, and there were nobody yeah. in Congress, but it was voted through, yeah, I, I, yeah, and that's when fractional reserve banking, I suppose that, that, that that's made it, the, it, everyone the world over has, has gone down the same route in their banking systems, apart from one or two, haven't we? We've, we've got North Korea, Iran, all, all the bad ones, all the people that, are, you know, we're, we're told are the bad people in the in the world. They're the ones yeah. that haven't gone down this uh, fractional reserve banking route, aren't they, that have not got a central bank? Or or do yes. they have a so central... Do they, do they have a, a similar system, but just separate from, from the one that we've got now? Yeah, but I've got a great idea. Let's get a big army together, convince everybody that the leader of that country is a bad guy, make him the bogeyman, and we'll tell everybody that what we're actually going to do is invade him because he's a really bad man, and it's all to do with the national security because they might just come over here and bomb us, and then we'll go in there and we'll put the Rothschild's banking system in place because that's what all the wars are about. It's all about money, 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 money. That's what happened. We we uh, who Saddam Hussein. He, he was going to start yeah. trading, uh, selling his oil in euros, um, and um, also uh, Gaddafi as well. He he I was decided just say he was going to start yeah, selling yeah. in euros as well. And 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 then uh, suddenly they they're terrible people. And even though that even though their own people absolutely adored them. I mean, if you look at Gaddafi, if you look at images of Gaddafi, he's on the back of a, 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 a like a Toyota truck and, you know, all the people are there and they're all cheering him and he's he's waving away. And, OK, people might say that's propaganda, but the, the difference being you get Obama, he turns up somewhere uh, when he was in power, he, gets, he turns up somewhere, he's in a, a limousine that's armoured He's got a, an armoured vehicle in front of him, an armoured vehicle behind him, an armoured vehicle's right at the very side of him, and then he's and moved the from one place to another. So who was really loved by their own people? Was it Gaddafi, who could just, like, you know, be out in the in the open, in public, and he, he didn't have any fear of being assassinated? Because, no, why, why would you assassinate him? He's, like, you know, he's, he's doing, you know, really good things for his people and stuff. So... To Obama, he's got to be hidden away. It, that just sort of shows you, doesn't it, of, of who the real bad people are. Well, the, the other thing as well is... Yeah, can, what can, I just, wait, wait, can I just yep. jump in there, Aid? little correction on the uh, removal of the gold standard. That was Nixon in 1971. Thanks, Super Leeds, for putting that in the chat room. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was thinking about it. Um, I actually thought it was 73, but that was us in 73, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's do you right. remember that, that awfully nice um, one eyed paedophile, Gordon Brown, sold all <laughs> our gold at a world record rock bottom price? Yeah. What a lovely bloke. Yeah, I'd love to go in a casino with him. <laughs> I do. I bet he got well rewarded for that. Yeah. But of course, who was the last American president to try and bring back in the greenbacks, the one that were actually backed by gold? Look what happened to him. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah. And then, because his brother was trying to sort of make the same noises, look what happened to him. Mm -hmm. We'll give him the same treatment. Mm. So, you know, when I, when I say that we've got one common enemy, um, the 11 who run everything, and... Uh, our queen bitch, because she's at the top of the tree. Um, are we still there? Because my picture's gone. Yes, we've just turned ours off because you were just um, you you were breaking up a little bit. So we've turned our uh, cameras off so that it sorts the uh, bandwidth out a little bit. You know what I mean? So you I carry on. You still you're still on air. You're still live. We can still see you. Okay, there you go. I've just turned just, you off. <laughs> just get the hamster running a bit faster, eh? Yeah, yeah that'll be it. Um, so yeah, so when I say we've got one common enemy, I, I, I don't mean it's the politicians, they're just the puppets that do as they're told. Um, I, I, and, you know, I, I've had them knock on my door, who am I going to vote for? Well, they'll have a job because I'm not on their stupid register for a start. Um, but secondly, 
the furthest left wing and furthest right wing politicians have got much more in common with each other than I have with either of them. And the simple reason is that money or currency is used as a way of siphoning off your wealth. At, at, in, at the end of the day, let's look, look at what currency or money is. It's a way of storing the fruits of your labor until you want to use it. Yeah. That's all it is. And, it, you know, if you're living in a tribe that's never seen a white man in the middle of wherever, and, you know, you save dried nuts, and that's your, your way of storing your wealth until you want to exchange it for something, then that, that's effectively what money is. It's a way of storing your, your efforts until you want to exchange it for something. Now, the real point I want to get to is we all say things like, oh, uh, how much is gold worth today? Or how much is silver worth today? Um, I had a conversation with somebody the other day and they said um, silver was something like six, £16 pounds an ounce. Dollars. Well, I'd, what I'd like to get into is is thinking about it the other way. And I'll explain what I mean. There will always be um, inflation because of supply and demand. So, I don't know, let's say we've got uh, 21 cars that are available to buy today. And we've got 21 people. The cars will sell for what they're worth. If you've got 21 cars and 25 people, the price, the reason of supply and demand. But if you've got 16 people and 21 cars, then, you know, them, them cars are probably going to have to be discounted a little bit in order to shift them. So you, you're, there is always going to be a supply and demand but most things, people say, oh, uh, the price of a loaf of bread's gone up. No, it hasn't. Them jangly coins that you've got in your pocket are worth less. So you need more of them to buy what you need. The price of whatever you want going up is not the reason you've got a part with more money. The reason you've got a part with more money is because this fiat worthless crap in your pocket isn't worth what it used to be. And that's why, um, oh, I can't remember who the speech was by, one of the American politicians in the, in the I think this is going back to the mid-70s, and they were on about uh, guaranteeing pensions. And he said, oh, yeah, we'll always guarantee the amount of your pension. What it'll be worth, I'm not going to guarantee, but it'll always guarantee the numbers. Well, if you've got to fill up a bucket, a pound coins, to... You know, to buy a loaf of bread, doesn't matter what the number is, because it's worthless. So it's it's not what you're buying is becoming more expensive. It's because, apart from the supply and demand, what you've actually got in your pocket is worth less, can buy less. So inflation isn't the price of something going up. Inflation is the deflation of the value of your coins or notes that you've got in your pocket, your currency. Well, and that, that also works with your Bitcoins as well, doesn't it? Because a lot of people are saying, oh, Bitcoin is a bubble that, that's bursting. Now, Bitcoin, the, the price of Bitcoin is purely on supply and demand. Um, it, if a lot of people want Bitcoin and there's not a lot for sale, the price goes up. If there's loads for sale and nobody wants it, it goes down. But it's also affected by the, the uh, rapidly reducing value of the dollar. Yes. Because yes. It, the price of Bitcoin is usually denominated in dollars when people talk about it. You know, it's, it's the benchmark that people use. Mm -hmm. And it's not the fact that Bitcoin is going so massively uh, growing, in my opinion. It's the fact that dollars were absolutely jack shit. You, you know, and... I think the biggest thing for the dollar will be when effectively they've exported all the um, devaluation of the dollar by buying all these Chinese goods. 
And when all that starts coming back the other way, what are they going to do with it? You know, I mean, there, there are now uh, countries all over the world who are looking at not dealing in dollars anymore. And, you know, that this is what all the wars are about. What? Just getting back to your Bitcoin, Andy. So I, yeah. I, I sadly, um, one of them in my customers' houses, I have to suffer the news because I never watch the news. You two could ask me about something that's been on the news in the past year, and I probably would know nothing about it because I just don't watch it. But what I did, what I did catch the other day, was oh, Bitcoin's gone down thirty percent in seven days. Three weeks before, when it went up four hundred percent in ten days, I didn't hear anything about that. Does you won't. The reason you won't hear anything about that is because Jamie Dimon, who's always out, the governor of the Bank of England, who's saying what a pile of shite Bitcoin is, and you're going to lose your shirt on it, is talking the price down so we can buy more of it. And and also because the central banks are scared shitless of it because it's peer to peer and it's untraceable. Yes, untraceable. Because, you know, we've all seen these families on the news and, oh, I've just had a little chip put in my hand so that I can go get me school dinners and I've got a chip so that I don't have to lose my card. I can just do me chip and pin, you know, me contactless just with me hand. Because they're just, you know, if you give somebody the power to switch something on, you also give them the power to switch it off. Oh, Whereas, right. I, I watched a, a, an excellent movie. I'd like to recommend it to anybody. I only came across it last night when I was just having a scroll through Netflix. And it was uh, Tom Hanks, and it's called The Circle. Now, um, for me, it, it, uh, the cryptos weren't really an element of it. But if you want to know what's going to happen with 5G, watch the movie called The Circle except um, be wary because they tell you it can all be turned round uh, after it started, but I don't think it can. I think the 5G smart grid, if it gets in place, we're all screwed. Well, like I said, you could ask me anything about the news and I wouldn't have a clue what you were talking about. Um, you know, I, I, I just... For me, the way that we, we all give up without knowing our wealth is because they they and us eh? um, <laughs> they siphon off our wealth by keeping the numbers the same, oh I've got a pay rise no you didn't, you didn't get a pay rise because your pay rise ain't gone up as much as inflation and as I said before, inflation isn't the cost of something going up, it's the value of what you've got in your pocket going down so let's start calling this out for what it is. And it's a way of them siphoning off your wealth into their pockets. And, you know, like I've said before, they've monetized the world. You know, you take your kids out of school to take them on holiday. Oh, it's a fine. You, you know, your kids have got to go to the doctors and they've go more than three times during term time. Oh, it's a fine. You drive down the road at 31 mile an hour and it's either a fine and points or we'll sit you in a classroom, um, NLP you for four hours, but it'll only cost you half as much. You know, everything is about money, 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 money. And oh, trust me. Interesting, interesting comment from Melvin in the chat room there on the chips. He's saying that the Eastern Europeans have already sussed out how to clone and alter those chips as they do at the moment. With uh, imported animals chips. <laughs> that, that's what amazes me about technology. As it progresses, the, the hackers, uh, they're always one step ahead, aren't they? Well, you know the new £5 notes, um, or coiled springs as I call them? Um, I, I think it's funny that we've actually got money we can now see through. <laughs> yeah. But... Um, the five pound note was so new. I hadn't, I think I'd seen one, but I hadn't handled one. So they'd probably been available for a day or two days. And I got offered a thousand pounds worth of fakes for 400 quid. <laughs> now yeah. I, I'd not even, see, I'd not even held a real one. Awesome. You know, so 
it's all right. I'm saying, oh, you know, we're doing this and we do. No, you're not doing it for our benefit. You're doing it so that we don't realise that as these notes get smaller and smaller and smaller. I mean, what colour did a pound note used to be? Uh, when I was a kid, they were green. Mm, oh. Me too. Now, you know these fivers that we've got? Yeah. Well, an old fiver was proper blue. These new fivers are kind of a bluey greeny colour. Yeah. And, and and it's all in there, subliminal in your head, that, oh, well, this is kind of worth what a quid used to be. Well, a quid got to be loose change once they brought in the pound coin and scrapped the pound note, didn't it? Yeah, exactly so. Exactly so. Yeah, this is, this, this, it's, it's all changing, just managing your perception, a bit like when they changed from selling petrol in gallons to litres, because it was, I think it was getting nearly a pound a gallon, wasn't it? Oh, something like But can you remember what happened not so long ago that um, petrol was a pound a litre? And as soon as, as soon as it went over, there was slow uh, traffic on the M1. Listen, you, was, you, you, was, listen, you two. You t- listen, guys, right? You two are starting to sound like a rate pair of farts. I completely understand <laughs> what you're talking about, right? I, 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 I know what you mean about when it went from a gallon to a litre and that was the the standard thing and then the the petrol price had just shot up. And I also understand, I think it was 2000, it was just before, uh, it was the year before 9-11 that the the price went over a pound and then there were the the, uh, blockades on refineries and then then they said, oh, listen, if you keep blockading the refineries, what's going to happen is ambulances won't be able to get to places because they haven't got no fuel so people will die you know why they use this shit against us you know we're, when when we're finally getting somewhere and we're doing something they use this shit against us and then all these fucking wankers that are sat outside that don't want to get involved right what they do is they go oh look everybody's gonna die in hospitals because you're fucking blocking refineries yeah we're blocking refineries because it's a fucking rip-off and that's what and they- uh, but, but but that's what happened is we got into that situation uh, that was still a big issue, and then fucking nine eleven came along the year after. But that was still a big issue, and that was something that we all fucking did together, and we should do again. But but we don't because we've been turned into these fucking negative pussies. The public opinion was firmly behind those guys who were uh, blockading the refineries because I was on the shelf end. I was a tanker driver then, and we <laughs> refused yeah. we refused to go out the refinery because it wasn't safe. One of our guys. Uh, it was an asthma tanker. He actually got run off the M180 motorway between uh, Immingham and Scunthorpe. They ran him off the fucking motorway, a loaded petrol tanker. That's how dangerous it got. And we pulled out. We got full public support everywhere we went. The only reason that's, that stopped was because the government removed the press and secretly brought in the riot police and they said, we don't care if there's women and children on them blockades. We're coming in and we're going to beat the fuck out of you unless you're gone by midday. Mm. And that's what happened. Yep. I was there. That, that, and it's again, it's the same like with the miners strike. The fucking miners, they, they, this is a, a, something really close to, I mean, I grew up in a mining village and I, I was around it when the miners strike were on. But they did the same to them. It, it's like this... This this one thing, you know, I think the minor strike was probably the best chance that we had to be able to fucking bring these shit cunts down. It's just that it, it's, it, it also coincided with Thatcher selling off council houses. So people were buying houses and were being, being able to own property for the first time. And, and it was relatively cheap as well um, until they fucking boosted interest rates up so they could fucking nick them back a few years later. But that's another story. But but, but that's what they did. And so what you did is it, it, you got... You've got these people that were fucking absolutely committed to this cause, like, you know, like the miners and stuff. But then you've got somebody who, who were like, well, you, actually, no, I ain't got a dog in this fate. I, I, you know, I'm not a miner. I've got nobody who's a, a miner. In fact, I don't even live in a mining community. So, you know, all, all I can think of is that my coal's not coming and it's not fucking filling me. It's not warming me house up, you know. But so I, I think that was the last fucking chance for us. And unless we can all get behind something and say, you know, we're not having this fucker anymore, you know, it, it doesn't take that many. 
to just go and, and just go, right, you know, you fuckers, go down to Parliament, 650 on them, just say, look, you don't have to kill them, you don't have to do all to them, just say, listen, out, go, do one. But, well, this, this is what I say when I say we've got one common enemy. You know, and, and Parliament are the puppets, but the common enemy that we've all got is the elite. And you're dead... I mean, when I was a kid, I can remember... That every was it Tuesday and Friday night or Tuesday and Thursday night we had a power cut. Yeah, yeah it, just what we did. You know, we sat around candles and we had to make sure we'd had our tea before it got dark because they were going to cut the power. Like it's just how it was. But if if you go, if you just think about what I've said about money and how it's at the centre of everything. That means that every sing- single political debate that you ever see anywhere on television, radio, whatever, is irrelevant. Because if you remember about... Because all the political stuff is always... Oh, um, what was the one I heard today? Oh, something about Oxfam. Oh, yeah, it's money. Oh, we didn't tell you what was really going on, if you're reading between the lines. Because we didn't want you to stop us giving you our money. And if anybody thinks that an organised charity is anything other than a business, then you're sadly mistaken. Because it's a business. That's all they are. But every debate on the TV is irrelevant. Because when we say that, you know, money is at the centre of everything, it's the way they siphon off your wealth without you noticing it by calling it inflation, when really it's the deflation of what you've got in your pocket. And along with that is all the other crap on telly. Well, along you know, with that the... as well, Aide, listen, if it, I, I saw something um, on Facebook, and I know Facebook's it, it's the fucking biggest pile of shit now. You might as well not even bother. I know I'm broadcasting on Facebook Live. Everyone on Facebook <laughs> Live who's watching, hello, I, I really dig you, but Facebook is a pile of shit. But I did see <laughs> something... And it showed you the relative weight of what you would buy. Uh, so it, it, I, I think it was chocolate bars, and yeah. it was from 2015 to 2017. So, and, and there was something like a like a 30 percent reduction in the weight of the product. So what they can do, what they do then is, you see, they reduce the product. They keep the price the same, and then inflation doesn't seem like it's going at the same rate. And that's a magic trick that's that's cast upon us all in everything. You know, you might, it, where, whereas you might have bought five hundred grams of something at, at some point and and paid, and it were prepackaged, and and you bought it, and it were five hundred grams or something. Now it'll be three hundred and seventy-five grams, but you're still paying the same price. So in essence, the price yeah. hasn't gone up, but. It, it's like a, it's a it's a way of hiding inflation, and, and they've been doing it for years. Yeah, yeah absolutely right. Um, I mean, I, I made a joke with somebody the other day. It was actually at a till. It's not very often I buy a chocolate bar, which you wouldn't believe if you saw me. Um, but I, I, I was at the till, and now they don't keep chocolate at the till. It's on a special shelf. And I, and I thought, you know, I fancy a chocolate bar. And I went to the thing, right, and I got to the till and I said to the girl, I said, since when did Mars bars only come in fun size? Can you remember them bags of fun size Mars bars? Just okay, two bites yeah. big. They're all that big now. Yeah. Unless you buy the fat bastard version, which is now as big as a normal one used to be. Yeah, but it costs you about eight quid, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, you know, and but you're right, Jason. But again, it's not inflation; it's deflation of the value of what you've got in your pocket, and that's what I want to get over tonight. Mm. Let's stop thinking about money as currency because money is gold and silver. Currency is this fiat shit that's used all over the world that has got no intrinsic value. That one day, when they stop trying to um, hold it all up like they have with the euro and the pound and the dollar. You know, it will go back to what it's worth, which is nothing. But gold and silver will always go back to supply and demand, intrinsic value. But that's what they're doing all the time. They're reducing the size of what we buy. Um, and they're saying, oh, you know, there's been there's been this rise in property value. So 
money into property and it, it's bollocks. It's bollocks. And for anybody who's confused, bollocks means confusion. Because that's all it's for. It's to confuse you. You know, if you look at all the other crap that's on the telly, you know, the, the bailiff things and, oh, we're coming to get you. Co it, it's not there to inform you. It's there to indoctrinate you. Well, it's there to yeah. scare you, so isn't the, it? That's all it's there for. It's yeah. to intimidate you. So that when they knock on your door, yeah, so that when they knock on your door, and trust me, they will, because think about it this way. The whole system is rigged so that somebody benefits. Now, it's not me, Jason, Andy. Or it's not rigged for our benefit. It's rigged so that you know, the little company that you work for will have to go into liquidation when the bank decide they're not going to factor their invoices anymore. And you will get made redundant. And then the same bank that stopped those that line of credit, which is completely different to currency and money, you know, to facilitate credit is not a lending of money. I think you should... And I actually, think, you, AD, I think you need to knock your, uh, your camera off. Because one of the banks saying... Ada, knock yeah. your camera off, mate. There we go. Are we any better? Yeah, that's a lot better, yeah. I just, where, where did we hear up to with my rant? Uh, well, you were talking about... Um, Andy, tell him. Um, I kind of remember Mars bars, but I'm a bit lost from there. Okay. The crap that's on the telly is there to... Yes. That, that's what he does. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that, we were talking about that. It's it's that it's designed to intimidate you rather than it's it's demanding money with menaces, really, isn't it? Uh, but it's there so that you will act accordingly when they knock on your door, you know, and they put the police things on the telly so that you will act accordingly when they knock on your door. Well, how about thinking for yourself? And you know, the bottom line is, when they want your name, it's a contract. That's it. Well, it's a somebody's just put put um, uh, a post. It's uh, John Hall's just put a post on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, Aya John, yeah. um, thanks for listening to us. Um, he's just put, bring back the Bradbury Pound. What do you know about the Bradbury Pound? Because I don't know very much about it. The only way that I, I've looked at the Bradbury is basically it's like the old greenback that JFK tried to bring back in. In that it was actually linked, it, it ha if it said £10 off, I promise to pay the bearer, like the claim check when you go take your suit to the dry cleaners, they give you a claim check. That money was actually deposited in an account. It was real money. Right. You know, and of course, don't forget, this is what all the Second World War was about. It was about making sure that the countries... And, um, oh, and by the way, if every country in the world is in debt, who do we owe it to? Well, I know, but, you know, I'm yeah. telling you. We owe it to the banks. Who are these banks? I mean, our country's got a magic printing press where we could just print all our own money, no problem. But they, they choose not to do that. They choose to give it to a private bank and get them to print it and then charge our country, all of us, because it's ours, I don't care whether they call it government money, public money. It's ours. It belongs to us. Okay? Then they charge us for doing so. Hang, hang on a minute. If somebody gave me a magic printing press, I think I'd probably keep it to myself and spread it about accordingly. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be giving it to you to get you to print it to then charge me for having done it. Mm. And, and, and that really is the bottom line because this is how they use it. And, you know the debates they have on the BBC and all the political crap that goes on and all these shit programmes that's on telly and even the storylines in um, Dead Enders and everything. It's all there to get you into the way of thinking of, you know, it's not really our money, it's the government's, it's their responsibility. Bollocks, it's not. It's but, but AD, AD, listen, how, how do we... You, you, you'll get it, right? I get it, Andy gets it, and... I I've got um, a bit of an inkling that probably most people who are listening to this who, 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 or who may listen to this get it as well. How do we make 
and I know you've got personal experience of this because I know about your your uh, your personal relationships and stuff like that. How do we how do we get people who are um, indoctrinated and in this in this system and working in this system and and doing well from this system? How do we get how do we uh, how do we convince them that this is a wrong system and, and the wrong way to be going? Sadly, because I don't like using the word they, but they have created a, a dog eat dog world by using this monetary system. What you end up with is, is pockets of people and forget about the 1% or the rich people. Um, and forget about class, if you like. It's more about the people at the very bottom who've got absolutely nothing and who scrape by. All they're interested in is, how am I going to pay my gas and electric and have I got enough to eat? The people above that are living paycheck to paycheck. The people above that, well, I've got my house to consider and everything. And the people above that, well, I've got my pension that I need to nurture. And when you said about personal relationships, you know, I, I'm sat in this little bungalow on my own. Um, two years ago, I was getting ready to get married. But the young lady, well, the lady that I was supposed to be getting married to couldn't live with a nutter anymore. And she knew a lot of this stuff. I made sure she did. Yeah, but, it, it, but it, it's also it was... but the, the the thing is, Ad is is that you know I probably would have been in that category um, of uh, you know I've got this and that to do, but suddenly something's happened in my life and I can't work now, um, which means I've dropped like a thousand quid a month, which means that I drop down into the I've got to fucking find a, an extra thousand quid a month. When um, I, you know, I've got a disability because uh, I'm self-employed. You know, I'm trying to do things by myself. I've never wanted to work for anybody. I've never wanted to do anything for anybody. And now I find myself in this. Uh, it, 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 all what I'm trying to say is, 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 it doesn't take much for you to drop down that one level. You know what I no. mean? And 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 yeah. I've got my wife is um, she she's a professional and she works. She's got a good job, but. You know, for us to take that hit has been massive, and so for I, I can't imagine what you know somebody who's not got anything to take another hit. It, 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 do, you, do you see how? Do you think how, that more and more people are dropping down the levels? You see what what you're describing, Jason, is exactly what I've said, and that's that they keep us all hanging on and hanging on and hoping and. You know, maybe this will happen or we can vote for somebody or we can, you know, and your question to me was, how do we get people to wake up or to realize what's going on? The first answer is share this with your friends, this recording. Um, but whatever it is that pisses you off, then challenge it. Because listen to your gut. Now, I I I start, I got letters just like everybody else when I moved into this place. Uh, Dear occupier, you're going to have a TV license, otherwise we're going to charge you a thousand quid. And my gut told me, "Hang on a minute, who's fucking telling me what I've got to buy?" You know, if, hmm. if I want to buy a red car, I'll buy a red car. If I want to buy no car at all, I'll buy no car at all. So, how, how does this? Somebody telling me I've got to buy a piece of paper. Where, where, where does that come from? So I started to look into it. And all I'm saying is, whatever it is that pisses you off, challenge it. Mm. Because anything against the system, or, you know, as Jack Black said in, um, what was the film he did with the school kids, with the rock concert, School of Rock, stick it to the man. Because that's our common enemy. You know, well, I, it's... I, I've got a reasonable, not a lot, but a reasonable amount in a pension scheme from when I was 
a financial advisor. Now, I sold these things for years. And I now put absolutely nothing into a pension at all. But I've got this pension that, you know, hopefully in three years' time will be enough for me to move abroad so that I can live comfortably. Sadly, it's not enough for me to stay in this country and do it. I'm going to have to move abroad. Yeah, I think we'll get into that in second half anyway. Second you know, hour. And, but what I'm saying is I would gladly give that up at the drop of a hat if we could get rid of this monetary system that all it does is line the pockets of the elite and strip the heart and the soul of everybody. Because while we're out, out here, you know, trying to pick up a few crumbs and hating each other because somebody got one more crumb than you did this week, or, you know, they were able to buy the latest iPhone this week, the, these elites are just soaking it all up. Well, and I, I, is... I would gladly give up this future that I've got planned in my head, you know, three week, three years and two weeks' time, because in two weeks it's my birthday, and I can get to my pension when I'm 55. I'd gladly give that up tomorrow if we could get rid of this monetary system, because that is what it does, and that's why it's at the centre of everything. And But when you said to me earlier, and how do we get people to challenge something? Challenge something, whether it's your TV license, your gas and your electric, or your water, or, or challenge it, research it. What is it you don't you like? Don't what don't you agree paying for? Whether it's a parking ticket, a speeding ticket, um, VAT on something that could probably be called um, something medical, but for some daft reason isn't. You know, whatever it is, challenge it. And Do your research on it. Paul Webster's screaming on Facebook that gas, water and electric are free. Well, we know that. <laughs> but you try not fucking paying it and see what happens. Yeah. Because yeah, it doesn't it just... matter. What we've got to learn is, it doesn't matter how right you are, even within their system, right? You, you end up in court and fucking trust me, you're going to lose. Yeah, we know we know this. We've had this before. We, we've had you this. Know, we, so, we've had this with Webby before, and uh, no doubt we'll have it again next week because Webby's going to be co-hosting with me on Monday next week when we've got Dave Witcher on and some dragons. So uh, that's probably just going to be me just like shutting my mouth and letting them go at it, and then so the, all the bills of exchange stuff will happen <laughs> <laughs> next week. I, listen, you know it's second. Minute. You know it's second hour. Can we just like uh, lighten it up minutes. a bit and 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 me? You and Andy have a bit of a laugh. Yeah, 56 minutes before somebody mentioned the Bills of Exchange Act. It'd have been 56 seconds if Webby'd have been on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, Webby? yeah, we love him though, don't we? Don't we love him we though? Do. Oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's a top bloke. I tell you what, I tell you what, he, he said something that made me think the other day, and that was, I haven't got a drinking problem. I just don't got a problem drinking. <laughs> right? And, and I seriously, I sat and I thought, oh shit, that's me. Because, you know, I drink too much. Um, I'm a sad, lonely old bastard. But let's just get back to this. The way to, if something's pissing you off, challenge it or research it. At least research it. Because it doesn't matter how much I go on about money. Yeah, all right, I do because it's at the centre of everything. But another reason I go on about it is because I was I worked in an industry very successfully very successfully, for 20 years. And I didn't understand money. And it was the finance industry I was in. You know, you, you've got to be willing to question your own truth. Because if it really is the truth, when you've done all your research and you've done lots of tests and put everything to the test, if it really is the truth, it still will be. But you might just be wrong, like I was. Yeah, and listen, I know that because I woke you up and I, I made you right and everything. So I, uh, I, I made you what you are today. So um, I, I, yes, I accept that. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, it, it, we're, we're like at half time. It's uh, we're an hour in. I think second half. What we're going to do is 
I want to sort of line it up a bit and perhaps like take pace out of things, particularly that fucking thing that was supposed to be a, a fucking spacecraft going through space. You know, and uh, before you do that, there there is a couple of thing, other things I just want to dip into again. But well, we'll do uh, that, mate. We'll do that. It's no yeah. problem. We've got another hour coming up on uh, Raconteurs News this Monday night. You're listening to me. It's Jason Holmes. I've got uh, Aid Hardy with me and Blast. Another Blast from the past, uh, Andy Young, although he's not quite a Blast from the past because he's been around ever since, really, and he, he's just sort of been in background and producing and stuff like that. So uh, we're going to take not a really break. Young. Go on, then. What, what do you say? Stop bottling and play the fucking music, will you? <laughs> For fuck's sake! Hey, I didn't do this to you, you know. When you know when you used to host, and I were co-host, <laughs> I never did this to you. Oh, right, I'll stop heckling then. Okay, I might have done. All right, we'll be back in a couple of minutes.
Hello, this is Heath Dweft, and I listen to Raconteurs News. And welcome back to Raconteurs News on this Monday evening. It is the, oh, I don't know, it's a, it's a day in February somewhere. February's so short anyway, none of days really matter, do they? Because they, they, it's that short. So if the month's shorter, the days must be shorter as well. So uh, uh, just just think about that for just a second and uh, and try and contemplate that. But we're, yeah, yeah, we're back anyway. Uh, it's uh, me on my own tonight with Andy, who's uh, Andy Young, and Aid Hardy. They're both joining me back on the radio. How are you doing, fellas? Good. I'm doing very well, thanks, Jason. Awesome. So uh, where do we want to go this second hour? Uh, uh, yeah. Where do we want just, to go this second hour? Andy, give us a, 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 something to talk about. Um, Aid's got some stuff we want to talk about before we just talk general shit. So um, I'll let Aid make his point. I can spout nonsense anytime. Go on then. Yeah, it was just, you know, when you said to me, you know, how can we wake people up or what can we do to help people understand? And yeah, all right. Our common enemy is one thing. Y- you, you know, your colour, your religion, irrelevant. Don't matter. The whole system is stacked against you, and our common enemy is the elite. And what I said was, challenge something. Now, the easiest one to challenge is your TV licence. And challenge something. And you, you can actually go on the BBC website, and tell them that you don't want a TV licence. But I didn't do it that way, and this is why. If you do it that way, you're still actually contracting with them because in two years' time, they'll write to you again. What I chose to do was, it's as simple as this. I put my address on a piece of paper. I didn't even put my name on it. I wrote the word notice in block letters, and I underlined it. And I then wrote, this address does not require a TV license. And I put it in an envelope and I sent it registered post to TV licensing. And I got a letter back saying, okay. Mm. That's how hard it is. So I'm not contracting with them. Didn't even give them my name. But here's the trick they pull. And I have done this. I have said this before. But um, gas, electric, water, TV license, uh, electoral register, they all do the same trick, but let's concentrate on the electoral register. They won't ask you for a contract. They'll give you all the tools for asking them for one. So what I'm saying is stop asking. Because on the electoral register, they write to the occupier. Well, Anything through the postal system has got to have a correct name on it, a correct address on it, and a correct return address. And it has to be a place of business, not a P.O. box. So what they do, they write to the occupier at your address, and they put a P.O. box as the return address. So there's two lots of mail fraud straight away. But here's what they do, which is the clever bit. Inside the envelope, there's a form for you to fill in and sign. So you're the one who puts your name on the application form. And then they give you this really convenient stamped addressed envelope with a proper return address on it. And to save yourself the price of a stamp, you pop this form in and you send it off to them. So who's asking for the contract, them or you? You are. We've... We've got music going on, Jason. Sorry about that, dude. It's uh, it's just shit. Sorry, I'm, okay. d- d- I'm trying to get to grips with this uh, new software, but yeah, you you carry on, mate. Okay, so what I'm saying is, just look at what you get through your letterbox. Now, is it them asking you for a contract, which you can say no to, or is it them just giving you the tools? for you to ask for a contract because they all write to the occupier and that's that's the bell that should ring really loudly in your head they're asking who you are and they want to do business with you 
Because yeah. if I if I want to write to Jason, I just write to Jason. I know who he is. And here's the clever bit. At the moment, I pay my council tax. So they know who I am. So why do they write to the occupier? It's because every year they need a new contract with me. So when I say challenge something, challenge in your own head what you're actually filling in, who you're sending it back to, and what it really means. Because nine out of ten things that you don't like, you asked for. Well, you know, there there are things, when you say, you know, challenge things, I don't think you need to challenge things. I just think you need to ignore things. I've not paid exactly council right. tax in what, what must be 15 years. And simply because I've ignored them. When they've wrote, you know, when they've wrote to me and asked me who's living in the house, I've just completely ignored them. Completely ignored them. And nobody's ever been round. Nobody's ever come round. It's, it's, it's been fine. But there are different things. The water, your water rates. Think about it. The water rates is is the, you know when you said the easiest one is the um, the, um, the TV license. No, the easiest one's the water rates. They've got it, 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 the water charges or whatever. So simple, just just so simple. Just ignore them out of existence. You know uh, that's it's that that's not even as difficult. As challenging something, it, it's easier because all you're doing is you're just ignoring them, completely yeah. ignoring them. I've got a, I've got a company chasing me for ninety thousand quid. You know they've sent me affidavits, they've served me on court thing. Uh, you know th- th- subpoenas and 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 I've got to go to court and I've got to do this and I've got to do that and they've served court orders on me. I've just ignored them. I've just completely ignored them. What they got? They've got no nothing. What they're gonna do? They're gonna they're gonna uh, they, they, they put a charge on uh, a, a property that that's not even uh, well. It's half mine, but it it, it you know it's it's the, the worthy the value is nothing, and I'm never gonna get any value out of that myself anyway. So it's just a, a, a pointless thing. It's just that what they'll do is they'll they'll just try to do absolutely anything just to. Just to try and grind you down. If you don't allow them to, then it then it's pointless on their behalf. You see, I, I'm just going to go back to something that you said to me once, Jason, and that is when when I people see my uh, removal of implied right of access poster in the window, you know, neighbours, oh, what's that? Oh, you know, it's, it's so that people the people who I want to come to my house can do, but the people that I don't want to can't. And if they do, I'm going to take them to court if they don't pay me. Well, what do you mean? What, 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 well, TV license, for example. What do you mean you don't pay your TV license? You've got to pay your part. And you think, well, and what you said to me once, Jason, was why are they annoyed with the person who's worked out not to get raped instead of being annoyed with the rapist? Yeah. And with the BBC and the TV license, you know, <laughs> not, not a truer word could be spoken. You know, I mean, this is an organisation that employed Savile for 30-odd years, who was the Pied Piper of paedophiles, you know. Um, so it, it's all about a changing of a mindset, and, and it's all indicative of this system that is designed to fuck you. That's the thing. You see, a, a few years ago, right, I was on... Um, I used to go on a forum, a, a Sheffield Wednesday forum. It's called Owl's Talk. I'm sure Super Leeds will know about it or, or, or he might have heard about it or whatever. But it's a, a forum. And I used to go on and I used to post... And, and this were... I think it was about 2012, 2013, 2012 when we beat United to promotion from League One on the last day of the season and we, we won. And, 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 and I used to go on this um, forum. Anyway, I happened to mention on this forum that I didn't pay tax, that I didn't... Like I, that, I weren't paying tax. I didn't pay tax. Uh, I didn't pay me council tax. I don't pay tax. It's theft. Yada yada yada. And the amount of abuse I got from people on that forum that were saying, "Oh my God, you're! I can't believe you're doing the the that yad." Blah, 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 blah. You know, just the same spewing up the same shit that they've been fucking fed off at telly. It's just spewing it out at you in a in a hateful manner, and and I, I, that's where that came from. I, that's where that came from because I wrote, "You're all fucking, you're all 
having a go at the bloke who's fucking found out a way to not get raped rather than having a go at the rapist. That's 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 where that came from. And and you know, I just don't even bother with them anymore. They they're just fucking as far as I'm concerned, they're idiots. They're just complete fucking idiots. There were one or two. There were a couple that, that that sent me messages and said, you know, well, I, you know, I believe in your stand. And uh, there were one guy, I think it were, um, who just found out about seven seven and all this, and he 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 got in touch with me. And but there were a few. But on on the whole, most people were like saying, well, you know, what if I'm getting fucked? Why aren't you getting fucked? And and I don't like that you're not getting fucked. And it, it's it's also the, it's also the like. It's also the same as like, um, well, it's it's Stockholm syndrome, isn't it? You know, yeah, I, yeah. my money, most, you know, what I'm working up until July. I'm working. Most people are working up until June or July before they've paid the taxes for the year. You know, and then they they start making money for themselves. If if you if you put it over a year and the and you you accumulated all the tax together that people pay on various things, people are working up until June. That's fucking half a year, man. You see, people, for some people are convinced, else. People are convinced that the tax money they pay is for the upkeep of the NHS, the <laughs> the roads, the street light, and it isn't. Of course, it's, it's to not. pay the interest on the loans that our country, on our behalf, has taken from private banks when they could just print the money themselves. Yeah. That's what it is. You are being fucked over. And if you're not pissed off, you should be. Well, unfortunately, what we're up against is a perfect system of planetary enslavement. They've been at it thousands of years. They've got it pretty good now. They've yep. got us to, to be slaves without most people even having a clue that they're a slave. Yep. Uh, but the thing is now, it's time to um, make your decision. What do you want for your future? Because those chains are tightening. I mean, I just going, the water, that was, that was what I wanted to say. You were on about water, Bill, and yeah, how, how easy that was. <laughs> I actually rang them about mine and the woman said, oh, well, it's all based on the rateable value of your property. And I said, well, that's interesting. I said, uh, uh, my property's not a commercial one, it's residential, so it doesn't have a rateable value. <laughs> and, there was this, and there was this long silence. And she said, what do you mean? I said, only commercial properties have a rateable value. Residential don't. So how can you charge me for water or sewerage? Uh, uh, I said, look, I know you've got a, but at least when you get home, have a play on Google or whatever search engine you use. You know, and I think the only thing that we can do in with the people that we meet in our daily lives is inevitably people do talk about what pisses them off, which is why I never shut up because there's that much. Um, and it's just hooking on to one thing that they say and asking them questions as to what they think it really is. Because people are only interested in what directly affects them at that point in time. But, you see, we've, we've, become, this, um, we've, we've become this species and we've been so indoctrinated and we've been so... Um, and I don't include myself in this and I don't include you and I don't include Andy in this either or, or anybody else that's listening. But we become this bunch of idiots that will believe that somebody sent a car into space. We, you know, a spaceman in it, um, <laughs> and, and you know it'll float around. And, and then, we'll, then, right? You know what? You know what? You know when we go? Hang on a minute. We can't see any stars. They'll go. Oh, you can't. Not from space. Because Buzz Aldrin said that, didn't he? Yeah. What the? F Do you know what the fuck? I'm. I Elon Musk, um, a super leads are said in a chat box to talk about Elon Musk. Elon Musk, I've got to give him full kudos. He has fucking produced a, an absolutely fucking magnificent, magnificent hoax that just shows it's like it was, it's like it was the 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 ultimate hoax. 
Uh, but NASA didn't want to perpetrate it because, you know, then, then you, well, well, people have been questioning NASA for years. And so it's a private individual. So if it goes wrong, they can just say, oh, it's him. He's, he faked it or whatever. And and this, this bloke, we, we're, we're supposed to believe that this bloke has sent this, this car into space. And it's... Uh, sorry. Good, Andy, please, give me... Assess what about it? I, I I just can't believe that anyone would take it seriously. I I saw like I say I saw one picture, like I just thought it was a stupid meme on Facebook and just completely ignored it. I didn't even bother checking out proper news sites to see if it was actual news. Okay. Can I just make a point? Yeah. Let's yeah. imagine for one second it really is true. <laughs> Go on. What the fuck? Does it, what, what does it matter? How, how is that going to change my daily life? Well, well, you see, the thing is, is right, uh, for me, what matters is th- that's just a test. So they've got a bloke to do something yeah. and, and, and pull off this it, it, humongous hoax. And then if uh, people fall for it, then, you know, they can continue with their hoaxes. Uh <sighs> That's, I, I that's, a, that's uh... for me. That's what matters. Is that is that they're pulling this off, and and fucking people are believing. I mean, come fucking on. You, 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 we can see stars from Earth, right? Through all the pollution, through the atmosphere, through everything. You get into space, you can't see fuck all. Talk out your ass. You're talking out your ass, aren't you? <laughs> well, I, I put on a. Um... I, I watch more YouTube than anything, and uh, <laughs> there, there was one of the um, there was a guy doing a, a talk on uh, moon rock and how it hadn't come from the moon and blah. And he actually went through all the usual moon hoax stuff, but what he didn't say was man never went to the moon. He kind of left it open to debate. So I put my little two penneth on, uh, which was. Man's never been 238,000 miles from the moon, let alone put a foot on it. Well, the abuse that I got for that was just phenomenal. And Well, you probably deserved you know, it, Aidy, to be fair. Yeah, I probably did, you know. But, you know, when you, when you look at it and, and all this hoax stuff that's, that's clearly, for anybody with half a brain, you know... What, the most important thing isn't what's going on on that little square thing in the well, big square thing now uh, that's fastened to your wall. It's about what's going on in your head. Because until you start believing yourself, rather than what somebody else tells you from the BBC or like the thing that Jason's been on about, you, you know what this? What's his name? Something Musk. Elon Musk. You know, who gives a rat's ass? What's more important is that the big agenda there is to get you to believe that we can actually do that and that then our governments are going to put billions and billions and billions of pounds or dollars into something similar when actually that could be used for, even if you believe in the monetary system that we've got, could be used for the good of you and your family and the people that you love. Well, well I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why... I'll tell you why people like me give a rat's ass. And and the reason is because it's another opportunity to wake somebody up. To, no, and I, I, I hate that saying. Yeah, me Everybody too, hates that saying. But, you know, it is another opportunity for you to go, actually, look at that. Just look at it. Does that is that real to you? Is that actually re- does that seem real to you, or does it seem like a cartoon? It don't even look, it don't even look as good as the the, the you know the the films in the nineties. If you look on on uh, Independence Day in nineties, um, when they get out into space, there's all stars there, right? They can see stars. Do, do, do whereas, you know whereas, I, if if it had been 
an, an accurate depiction compared to to the, the, there would have been no stars, would there? They wouldn't have been able to see any stars. It's I just... see what it reminded me of, Jason. Earlier on, when I was at your house, and you you showed me that video of the rocket, the the boosters landing backwards. <laughs> oh, have you seen that, Andy? Have you seen the Have you seen the rockets landing? No, I haven't, mate. You haven't, right? So you know boosters, rocket boosters that they had like on shuttle. Um, yeah. They and and what they did is they fell away and they went into sea, right? Well, these yeah. ones they don't on on this uh, mission they didn't. They reversed back to Earth and landed both of them together <laughs> on a, on a, a, a on a single on it. So they were upright. They landed upright vertically. Uh, and uh, on a like ship, that. on a ship. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pitching and rolling. You're right. It's an episode of the Thunderbirds they put out there, isn't it? It's mm. fucking ridiculous. It's absolutely uh, ridiculous. Uh, but yeah. So, so th- this is for me. It's an opportunity to just say to somebody, "Golf for fuck's sake, come on." Jesus See, Christ, are you the, fucking really, really, really... This is what they've done. For me, this is what they've done, right? They've gone... This is what they're saying to the world. They're saying, you lot are so fucking thick that you're going to fucking watch this and believe it. And also, what's going to happen is there are people that are invested in this that think that this is going to happen... <laughs> that are going to see it and are going to defend and say that it actually happened simply because they're invested in it. You know, like people who are into science and all that shit, fucking sort of shit. They, they, they're going to say, oh, oh, well, yeah, yes, this definitely happened because I've seen it, I've, I've, I've watched it on fucking line. And they're going, oh, yeah, so this is definitely... this." And, and yeah, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, are you watching that or what? It's like fucking Thunderbirds. It's like watching fucking... I'm looking for a string above rockets that are supposed to be fucking landing on on the fucking. It, Did, uh, <laughs> you know the thing with Branson where he was uh, going to send people into space. It started off at I can't remember what the height was, um, ab- above the earth. Um, oh, just but a second. Could... Hey, can I just jump in there, uh, mm-hmm. Jason? I've got a message off Paul Webster. He's now posted it in the chat room that the Facebook Live's gone down, mate. Yeah, I can see that. It says that oh, okay. your wireless connection. Sorry for interrupting, Aid. Carry on, mate. It's all right. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, uh, Branson, when he was, uh, and still does, I think, advertise for people to buy a seat on this, uh, the first commercial flight into space. Um, which is, you know, I don't know how much money it is. Uh, I'm sure it's affordable for some people. But it started off at a certain height, and it's now down to about a fifth of the height that it was, and it, it means you're just about going to get into space. <laughs> you know, they, they started off at, I can't remember what the height was, um, but now it's an awful lot less. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. F- uh, listen, uh, if you're listening on Spreaker, Facebook is down at the moment. It's not letting me do anything. Um, it's probably some sort of fucking rant that I've done, or I've swore too much, and it's it's told me to fuck off. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're listening to Rakotor's News. It's uh, Monday night, and it's Andy Young and Aid Hardy with me here, and we're talking. Well, we're talking crap out of dudes. Well, we're talking Elon Musk, which is crap. Yeah, and and all I would say is, instead of watching that shit, do some research on something. Your own research. Don't believe anything I say. You know, do your own research on what's important to you. But (laughs) I I, I guarantee, whatever it is, at the centre of it will be money. Whether it's court appearance, your council tax, your gas bill... Your electric bill, your TV license. You know, that's what will be pissing you off. It's all about you parting with money. Because that's what's at the centre of everything. Can I just tell our listeners on Spreaker that um, apologies for anybody who's had to come over from Facebook Live, but um, we are being actively censored by Facebook because uh, they've shut down Jason's feed 
and I put a comment underneath his video, live video, saying that um, it's working fine over at raconteursnew.com, and that was marked as spam. <laughs> Mm. Oh, I, I got banned off eBay the other day because <laughs> I'd right. sent somebody my phone number. Yeah, whatever. Well, I'm going to try and start Facebook Live again. If the, if it, if the uh, don't want to do it, they don't want to fucking do it. Another dickheads. That's uh, it. Yeah. I think the robot must have worked out. You said what a pile of shit Facebook was two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It must have done. I mean, it, I probably got Mr. Facebook Live listening, ris- listening to me going, "Oh my God, he just did. He just say we were shy." Uh, right, we've got half an hour, lads. What we're going to do with this last half hour? Anarchy. Yeah, I'm for that. Anarchy. Anarchy. Right. Well, I will tell you what. You okay. two, uh, I... chat. I'm going to go and uh, go for a wee. I'm sorry. I'm all right. Can I, I can I kick off? Um, yeah, kick off. I've just I've been while we've been talking, I've been reading some of Melvin's comments in the chat room, and uh, he's a guy who's uh, certainly had some experience in life and some interesting experiences. I wonder when Jason comes back if he perhaps not somebody it might be worth inviting on the show because he's got some fascinating information that. I'm, I'm sure you might want to share with our listeners. Give us an example. Oh, he's talking about um, uh, clean, renewable energy technology. Yeah. Uh, he's also telling us about he doing mechanic in because he's had his woodworking tool, tool stolen, but apparently he was also a city trader. Ah, right, okay. But, but he quit after one week because he got bored with looking at screens all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he sounds like a guy who's got an interesting tale to tell if you'd be up for coming on, Melvin. I, um, you know, I'd encourage anybody, you know, if you've got something to say, something to debate, you know, it, it, even if you, you're just at the very beginning and, you know, you want to know, then come on as a guest and... And ask, because there is no such thing as a dumb question. The only dumb thing to do is to believe the shit that you're fed. That's the only dumb thing you can do in life, is believe what you're told out of that little square box in the corner. You know, that that's the dumb thing. And, you know, I, I get people um, who I talk to, and because at work I'm just that, that nutter, that conspiracy theorist. Well... Even the word conspiracy theorist, all it is, it's a thought stopper. You know, it's to stop anybody ever actually having any thoughts of their own. Um, and, and it's a conversation killer. Well, you know, you, you can call me what you want. And people ask me, well, what's your ideal view of society? Well, my idea of utopia is just people interacting with each other voluntarily. You know, and that that doesn't matter whether um, you decide who's going to police your street. You decide, I don't know, listen, there's seven billion ideas out there because that's how many bums there are on seats on this planet. And I certainly do not want to be the next king of anarchy because there is no such thing. All I'm saying is the system that we've got is designed to rape you. A system where there is no real system other than voluntary interaction between caring, loving people who actually care about each other is the way to go. And I know we are miles away from that. But the worst kind of anarchy, and I don't mean throwing petrol bombs in the street, that's not what anarchy means. The worst kind of anarchy is streets ahead and closer to utopia than what we've got now. Dude, you don't need people to love and care for each other. All you need to do is you need people not to be a cunt. That's all you need. Just don't be a cunt. That should be the thing. people are like that because they're all scraping around for the scraps and the odd bits of seed that are left. Well, you know, our common enemy, the elite, are there lapping it up, devaluing what's in our pocket on purpose so that they gain and you lose. 
That's what people <laughs> if you don't, got away from. If you don't play their game, the, you see, that's the problem is is that we play their game. We play yeah. it. We, you know, the, 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 there's a, a white bloke that's um, angry, angry with immigrants. A, a middle-aged white, like myself, middle-aged white bloke. Uh, nobody can offend me because there's nothing in any laws that say that I can be offended in any way. But I can offend out. So what I do is then I start thinking, well, hang on a minute. These people, uh, these these people... I, I can offend them, but I can't be offended. They can do whatever they want, and, and then it, it, it builds up a divide. And then yeah. people become have this victim mentality, and this victim mentality, so you get... When you get sort of racism, you get this victim mentality where there's the bloke that says that he's been... Um, uh, He's been discriminated against because of his colour of his skin. And then you've got the bloke that says, I can't say oh to anybody. You know, I can't even point out even the obvious things. And even the obvious things... Uh, I was thinking to myself today, um, our next-door neighbours, I think they're from... Um, I, I think they're from with the from from somewhere in Asia anyway, and what one of the the, the young lads is is he, he, he goes to school and I see him going to school in his morning in his coat and everything, and I said to Danielle, I said to him, I said he looked like Kim Jong Un, <laughs> right? And then I thought I said to I said to him, I said he looks like Kim Jong Un. He's just walked walked past and. Uh, then we were discussing it, and I was thinking to myself, "What? Well, actually, is that racist? You know, would that somebody, somebody somewhere would deem that as to be racist? Whereas, you know, I don't know where he's from. I don't know. All I'm doing, all I'm doing, is I'm making a comparison of of how he looks compared to Kim Jong Un because he just he just looked like him. He got the same hair style, and he got his coat on, and he just looked like him as he was going past. So." How how does that become racist? And then, and then when somebody said just just a second, and I thought to myself, right, well, if he's not from Korea, um, and he's from let's say Malaysia or something, somebody would say, well, that's racist because you you know. But then I thought to myself, well, would the same thing apply? And this is this is how it's been fucking skewed. Would the same thing apply if I said that Jack Villeneuve looked like Christian Slater? Because they're not from the same continent. They're not the same race. But would it be racist for me to say that they look the same? Because I, for me, they do look the same. Jack Villeneuve, have a look at him. Jack Villeneuve and, and, uh, uh, and Christian Slater, they, they look the same. But but they're from different backgrounds. So would that be racist? So it's it's like it's been stacked, and and we can't say we're in a position where we're wondering what is okay to say, whereas what should be okay to say is what's in your mind at that moment in time, because if whatever is in your mind at that moment in time, when you say something and and you are when you um you you were. Uh, verbalize what's going on in your mind that's what reveals your true character and that's how we should that's, be able to 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 you know to, uh, to to individualize each other and to be able to decide who you want to have some time with and who you don't want to spend time with i, I, I once got accused of being racist um and this is the comment i made and it was down a microphone in front of a big crowd of people. And I said, you can always tell American tourists in London after Easter because they wear white shoes. And it's true. If you go to London or Edinburgh, after Easter, you can tell the, the American tourists just by looking at what they've got on their feet because they do all wear white shoes. Well, let's not use the word all. 90-odd percent of them, okay? And somebody somebody accused me of being racist for just being observational. And that's how ri ridiculous it's got. Well, can, can I just say as well how ridiculous? How can you be racist against a country that is prides itself on being a nation of immigrants? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been to Ellis Island. I've stood next to that big green thing. 
you know, the Statue of No Liberty. Um, <laughs> well, you see, the, you know, point, the point I was making, AD, was that was I'm somebody, and I consider myself somebody who, who, who will think about things and, and, and work things out, but for me to find myself wondering whether that thought, that gl- fleeting thought that and, and something that I'd mentioned to me, sat next to my wife, nobody else was anywhere near, I didn't, you know, go take a picture and say Kim Jong-un's going past my house or anything, but it, the fact that I actually thought about it is what's wrong with what what's yeah. going on this the, these days? Because I shouldn't have I shouldn't have even thought about it. I should be able to say what I want. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I I I, I, I they were um <coughs> we watched um we we've been watching Stranger Things and they were one of the episodes uh, we've just watched. I think we we watched it last night. Again, it, it was called Pollywog, right? So I turned to Danielle and I said to her, "Is it about a black parrot?" Now, should I feel <laughs> should I feel bad about that? There was nobody there that could have been offended. There's only Danielle, but should I feel bad about that? This is this is what we what 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 we've this is what we've got ourselves. This is the pickle with the knickers in a twist we've got ourselves into. You know, we're, we're actually thinking these things when it, it doesn't even need to be thought of, and that's what that's the power of this cultural carks. Uh, Cultural Marxism, cultural Marxism, cultural Marxism that, that that's, that's been easy uh, for you to play. Yeah, exactly. That's a different <laughs> that, that, that's been like dragged out over this f- few weeks. You know, it's 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 just not. Surely I should be able to make a a, a really harmless joke to my wife when we're on a zone in you know in the house and not feel like I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, but Jason, we're being farmed. And and the farmer wants to make more profit, so he's making the cages smaller. I tell you what, Andy. One of my favourite ones is: these are not countries; they're farms. Yeah, it's exactly what they are. The farms. You know, is it by accident that a landmass, like how many African countries are there? I don't know. You know, but if you look at a map of Africa hundred years ago, the lines weren't where they are today. You know, look at a classic example, uh, Israel. You know, <laughs> just, you know, the, the, these lines are drawn for political, all right, if you go back far enough, it's tribal. But since all the politics and this system that we've got kicked in, you know, it, it's a farmyard. And all they're doing, they're moving the fences on the farm. That's all they are. Well, we're down on Facebook again, so uh, apologies to anybody that's uh, tried to be watching on Facebook. Uh, I, I think they've had enough of us tonight, don't you? <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> they don't really like us, do they? I think it, when I started talking about that, you know, boom. I think, I think it might be an idea to kick Facebook into touch and start doing it on, uh, maybe on uh YouTube live if you can, Jace. Yeah, I'll do it. I, I think that's what I'm going to try and do. From um, I'll, I'll I'll see what I can do tomorrow. And, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe and we can get banned off there on, as face, well. on, on but, YouTube um, live. But again, they can they, they still they they can still stop whatever they want, can't they? I mean, you've only got to pop a few little. Uh, f- their phrases that go through their algorithms, and then they'll just shut you down. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Talking about phrases, um, I had a, a a police officer ask me if I'd got a problem with authority. And uh, when my reply was, the only problem I've got is you thinking that you've got some authority, <laughs> um, it sort of made their ears prick up. And they actually said <clears> to me, <throat> what do you mean? And I then got into quite an intelligent conversation with them. And um, both the WPC and the PC were quite open to a debate. I'm sure they drove away thinking, he's a nutter. But I I, I did actually manage to get engaged in, in a bit of an intelligent conversation. And all I'm trying to say to everybody listening is, when we tell you that this world is upside down, when when you when you're faced with something, a bill or a demand or a claim or whatever it is, 
Turn it upside down, because that's probably the truth. Go on, give us an example they need. Well, like the, you know, have you got a problem with authority? No, the problem is that you think you've got some authority. Because the tr that is the truth. They don't have any authority unless we give it to them. But we're all duped into give it, giving it to them when they say, do you understand? And we go, oh, yeah. You know, understand, stand under. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an old one. Everybody knows it. Or everybody should know it. If you don't, do your research, Google it. And I, I actually, I, I, I found some, uh, um, I was on uh, the computer the other night looking at Banksy artwork. And one of the best phrases, and I don't know who actually said this, but Banksy certainly painted it more than once. And it's simply this. If you want to achieve greatness, stop asking for permission. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. You know, and Jason, Jason's quite right. Ignore it. What are they going to do? Demand that you do something with your body that you don't want to. Yeah. How does piss off sound? <laughs> It sounds brilliant to me, doesn't it? Doesn't it you, Andy? Yeah, sorry, mate. I wasn't really concentrating there. I was just trying to put uh, Melvin's phone number in my phone. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Did, no did you actually hear what I was saying when you was uh, having a wee, Jase? Because um, Melvin has been posting in the chat room quite a lot lately. Um, he's been commenting on our YouTube channel before that. Posted some amazing stuff in there tonight. And I was just saying... Uh, probably get a show out of that because um, I'd love to hear him uh, talking about his stuff and he said he'd, he'd probably do that. So yep. Jason's fully booked till tomorrow. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It, sounds like a, it sounds like a plan, that, Andy. Yeah, it'd be, uh, it'd be great. I always like talking to new people and uh, people we, we do fresh it's different good, ideas. Yeah. I think it's also good to get listeners on who, you know, they listen to us and they've got something to say. So, yeah, come on and say it. Yeah, I'll we'll, tell you what, we've had it before, I, I would, haven't we? I, I would love to. I mean, it's not my show anymore, but I would love to encourage anybody who's sort of just at the point where they don't, they know there's something wrong, but they don't know yet what they don't know. You know, they, they're just kind of at that point of, hang on a minute, there's something wrong here. Who happens to be listening? who's thinking, oof, actually, these three nutters might have something going here. That's who I'd love to encourage Jason to get on. Because that that's exactly what we want to try and do and find out how you do turn people into an intelligent thinking being. You know, rather, rather than, you know, somebody who listens to their gut feelings when they know deep inside them that, that there really is something wrong, but they don't know what it is. They're the people that we've got to get. Yeah, we've had them on. We've had uh, a few um, listeners on before. We've had Super Leeds, who were uh, a great guy. He uh, had a few uh, sherbets. I think he uh, he might admit, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he were a really good uh, good evening, good good show, good show. In fact, we had two listeners on that, night, didn't we? Yeah, who else did we have? Uh, we had that guy over in uh, Burnley. Can't remember his name. Uh, I will do oh, in a minute. Oh. It was. Should put it in? I'm sure we put it in chat box in a minute. I know he's. I know he's listening. Carl Davis. Carl Davis. Yeah, Carl. Yeah. 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 He, he, yeah, yeah. Good. 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 Uh, good input we had from uh, uh, both of them. Um, so we, we've got. We, we know we've got some great listeners, and. Uh, we know that we've got people that are on the ball with what's going on and we've got people that um, perhaps aren't quite on the ball but are getting on the ball. You, you, you know what it's like, Ada. I'm just glad that it only took you six months where it took me six years, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know, I, I was just thinking the other day that, you, you know, when, when I'm sort of talking to people who are how I used to be, I mean, I don't believe in the state at all. Uh, it's just fiction. Um, and so I I don't look at the world how the general public, if you like, do. Um, and sometimes I forget that there is what I would call the old way that I used to look at the world. 
that people don't actually realise that. And and I, I, it's not that I feel sorry for him because pity's not a good thing. I just wish that, sadly, for anybody to, let's call it wake up, I know there's, we can't think of a better phrase, but the way that that generally happens is that somebody absolutely kicks them from pillar to post. And that might be the court system, it might be something to do with some perceived authority that comes crashing down on them, where they lose, I don't know, a family farm, um, or what, something of incredible value to them. And it might not be monetary. And that's how people get woken up. And I would love it to be that people get woken up because actually they're starting to think for themselves without all that shit happening to them. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That, that, that's that's the big hope in it is that, that people can start to realise what is happening without having to go through the trauma that, that most of us have to go through. And, and you know... D- Sometimes I mean, the, what? the trauma, the trauma is is in in itself is enough. But then it's when you realise what is going on and you and you look and and you've seen it, then it's exacerbated and, and it's sort of it, it's sort of amplified times five. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So so for people to be able to find this out for themselves before they have to go through that trauma would be a huge advantage to them because um, I, I think th- I woke you up and you didn't really have to go through much of a trauma, did you, when I woke you up? No, although, although I'm still going through it because when I say this world belongs to all of us, not just the chosen few, yeah, that is what is actually in my heart. That is what I'm made of. You know, I, I genuinely believe that. Because it does, it belongs to all of us. Yeah, yeah. And but you, but, but you, what I'm saying is, that you didn't have any, you didn't have any personal trauma that you had to go through before you, 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 you no, before no. you, you I, got, I got to it, this. I, right? I got it but, but, but once I had woken the, up, the trauma is when you realise what's going off and you see yeah. things. That's traumatic in itself. When you first, you know, yeah. when you first become awake, you, you sort of. St- you know, like going, oh my god, oh my god! I remember it myself. For God's sake, I, I remember, you know, saying to uh, gas pump attendants at three o'clock in morning when I were, <laughs> or four o'clock in morning when I were on my way home from work when I were DJing and saying, oh my god, you ought to see, this, you know, have, look at this, have a look at this. And he goes, oh now, now. Uh, and I said, no, he, honestly, we're American government that did nine eleven, and he's like, now, now. And, and, and I, I can't see, I can't see him doing that to their own people. And he just didn't want to know. And it was just like, yeah. fucking hell, it was like nuts. You know, you just wanted to, you, you, your brain wanted to explode know, and, and come on everybody with truth from your fucking brain spunk. I don't know what it were, but it was just like fucking, just, just daft stuff. I, I sometimes just feel like standing in the middle of the street and shouting. How bad has this shit got to get before you lot actually look at it? Mm. I feel that like day in, day out, I You know, and too. love or hate David Icke, he, he did come up with a great um, line, tiptoe totalitarianism. You know, how much more shit will he take today? Let's give him a bit more shit, and when they all kick off, we'll back off a bit. But don't worry, in three months' time, we'll keep going down the same road. Because them, them idiots will think they can just vote for somebody else. <laughs> you know, how bad you is know, it? We, 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 uh, we paint a bleak while future you're on, picture, While you're we? on your hands... Sorry. I was going to say, while you're on your hands and knees, begging for permission, you're getting shafted up the arse. Exactly. To stop asking for permission, and and people people don't understand that though, do they? They don't. They they. Whew, they, they I know. They think we've got to get we've got to get rid of this perception that compliance is something that's good. It's you know it's a good thing. 
You complain. You're paying your taxes. I pay my tax. How many times you heard that someone said that? I pay my taxes. You know, I, 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 I was saying to somebody uh, a, a couple of days ago. In fact, a few. I think I've mentioned it on show, but it was a few weeks ago. But um, I was in the. Uh, I was in the co-op and I was in queue. And there were three people in front of me in the queue, and they'd all got these fucking lanyards and the like IDs on them. Right, all three of these people in front of me in queue, and I said to I said to uh, one of them, I said, uh, "Isn't it funny? Slaves used to wear chains. Now they wear lanyards." <laughs> Well, Jason, I, I, I've spoken before about a guy called Larkin Rose and a book that he's written called the, I think it's The Greatest Superstition. And and basically it's just, it, it's a book of anarchy and it's explaining how the government is just a superstition. It doesn't exist. And he, he did a show on his uh, YouTube and it was called Mental Malware. And, you know, he said there's one way you can tell if somebody's got mental malware you know, actually on display for the world to see. And it's when they say, oh, I'm a law-abiding taxpayer. <laughs> because just because something's law doesn't make it right. No. You know, as it says on, on my Skype thing, nobody has exemption from morality. And you can put that back to tax, <laughs> being charged for gas and electric that's supposed to be already paid for. You can put it down to, I'm going to use this, the Bills of Ex Exchange Act being used against you in a court, even though all your case is buttoned up and on paper you've won, you will still get shafted. Just because it's law does not make it right. And that's true. And uh, I think that's a, a good point to close on this evening. Uh, thank you very much to my guests this evening. Um, well, well, I, I don't know. Guest slash co-host Andy Young. I uh, all right, Andy. Give, let, let's get last word on this one, mate. Uh, on this evening. Uh, well, I really, I think it's hard to uh, add anything to what um, Age just said. I mean, he, he's summed it up fairly well for me there. Um, yeah, brilliant job there, Age. Right? Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you on air. And we, I know we chat fairly regular off but pleasure chatting to you on air mate and thanks for inviting me on again Jace and, um, and for listening uh, everybody and uh, are we close to getting you back or what not really no ok not well you, you'll be on sporadically won't you with me uh, as a, as a co-host when uh, I've got the likes of aid and what have you so uh yeah thank thanks very much for joining us tonight andy uh i'm much appreciated i know you've had a, a very busy day and uh, a difficult well not really a difficult day i think you've enjoyed it, you? yeah, mate, it, I've, it had, it's, I've had a whale of a time yeah I've yeah changed, but it's been busy though first, hasn't it i've changed my first solo shitty nappy mate and <laughs> don't be more proud <laughs> no awesome and he's nearly 50 folks or he is 50 Cheeky bastard! I'm 55 this year. Oh, I well, wish I was. Well, I you're not a cheeky face. bastard. I would call you young then, younger than what <laughs> you are. Yeah, you can be a cheeky. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, Andy. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thanks, AD. Any chance of you coming back doing your show again? Do you know I'm going to say no, and I will tell you why. Go on then. Because I ended up in a constantly negative frame of mind. Okay, that's no problem, and... mate. I'll, I'll I'll keep it going. Don't worry. Yeah, it's not and, for everybody. Well, you know, at, at the end of the day, all we can try and do is what's right. But the first thing that's got to happen is you've got to be happy in yourself before you can help anybody else. Oh, so true, man. So true. Otherwise, it drives you mad. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, no problem, mate. Like, I'm going to keep doing Monday, Tuesdays as long as uh, I keep being able to be able to broadcast and have something interesting to say to people and uh, interesting guests on as well. Uh, tomorrow night, I've not got a guest at the moment lined up. I'm just waiting on a couple of people. If not, I'll do something uh, of some sort tomorrow night. So uh, 
be back for that at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening on raconteursnews.com and on spreaker.com. Uh, you can find us just to a search for Raconteurs News and I'll probably do um, a Facebook Live if it'll have me, but I, I'm going to try and do YouTube. So uh, look out for that as well. That'll be on Alter Edge Media, uh, which is my YouTube channel, Alter Edge Media. That's all A L T E R E D G E Media dot uh, whatever on uh, <laughs> on. Um, on YouTube, so uh, I'm going to try that tomorrow night. So uh, thanks very much for listening this evening. It's been an absolute uh, pleasure to be speaking with Andy and Aidy. It's uh, been two blasts from the past. Hope very, very much to uh, hear from them again very soon. But um, but but you know, in their own time. We want to just give and make sure that it's okay for them. We're going to finish off with this one. Take it easy. I'll see you tomorrow night. Bye.